Let's look at something terrible and let's use completing the square, which is what we've just done. So f of x is going to be 2x squared minus 12x plus 22. What do I do first? If I want to complete the square. Actually, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm being asked, well, that's what the question is saying, complete the square. So what should I do first? Take out two. What do I get? Good. All right. Now, some of you made this mistake on your test. You did not take out, you forgot to put these big brackets in here, right? So what does this become? Oh, sorry. And then what happens here? Minus nine, good. And this must all be in brackets. So then I have X minus three squared plus two which means I have two X minus three squared plus four. All right. So if I am now finding, I am being asked to find the range of this function. What do they mean by the range? Have a think about what this graph looks like. Can you picture what this graph's going to look like? What is it? Say it again. Is this a positive or a negative quadratic? Okay, so it's definitely like this, right? What else do we know about it? Okay, we know that the y-intercept is 22. That's something we know. What else do we know about it? Okay, the turning point is 3, 4 because of this. If the y-intercept is 22 and this is 3, 4, what do you know? <laughs> hang on hang on don't talk about the range yet what else do you know about this graph that's important no roots the, this turning point is above the x-axis and it goes up so that means it looks like this okay that's important to know because that means this is unsolvable they are asking for the range right so what's the bottom value yeah, yeah right See, so this is why it's really important for us to be able to picture it, to know what the turning points are. Is it a smiley face or a frowny face? And then we can say the range must be, because they asked for real numbers only, right? So obviously these are all theoretical negative values. They're not part of our graph. So the range is always going to be greater than four. This is where completing the square helps us because it gives us our turning point. And then we just need to know whether we're going up or down from there. All right. Let's do one more and let's make it really awful. Yes. yes. Terrible things. Everyone's favorite. All right. All right. Let's do a really awful looking graph. So f of x is going to be 5 over. Yes. <laughs> x minus 2 squared where x is all real numbers and the function of x must be greater than or equal to five. All right, so I need to think about what this looks like, okay? So we know what it looks like when there's stuff on the bottom. This is one of the ones I didn't look at before. Let's quickly have a look at this. What do you think is gonna happen if I say that it's one over x squared. What do you think is going to happen if I put that squared in? If this is currently 1 over x, what happens if I put a squared in the bottom there? What happens? What happens if you square a negative number? Right, we're about to lose all our negative values in the y, right? See? Remember that stuff? So we're losing all our negative y values because anything x that you square becomes positive now. So isn't that what we're doing over here, right? Down here, these are all squared values, which means we're going to have a graph that looks like this. <laughs> Instead of a graph that looks like this, right? So this one basically flipped up because anything negative, this is the negative bit, flips up into the positive section. Uh, this is an inverse graph. All right. 
So it means that you can't have like square root of negative numbers. Honestly, for our purposes, it doesn't mean much at all. It just means that you can't have, can't square root negative numbers. You can't have eyes. We don't really deal with eyes yet anyway. All right. So you want the greatest possible domain. All right. We're being asked for the greatest possible domain. Now, if it looks like this, aren't we asking? So we want X to always, sorry, the function to always be greater than or equal to five. What does that mean? Right, the Y. So basically what we want to do is chop this graph at five. We're going to be very violent, okay? So what we want to do is figure out what X values are going on here. So when, so what I'm really saying is when the graph equals five, right, when Y is five, what is X going to be? And should, how many solutions should I get? Two, right? This is a quadratic. They might be repeated roots. We'll see. Probably not because I should have two different values because the graph should look like that. So let's bring this across. X minus two squared is five. Bring that back over. So X minus two squared is five over five. That's one. I know. It's amazing. Square root of one, is that right? What's wrong? Plus or minus positive and negative square root. So then X is, so X is what? Three and one. So that means this is one and this is three. So this means, am I between those values or am I on the outside of those values? I am between. So, whoops, I wrote my sign backwards. It's not great. So, ah, I did it again. Why am I like this? What am I doing? No. <laughs> what is happening to me? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I had it right before. My brain has just totally had a. I don't know what has happened to me. I've just lost the ability to function. Okay. X must be like that. Okay. One and three. So here is our one, here is our three. If we want our function to be greater than five, we just replace y with five and then solve it like a normal equation. Never forgetting to take both positive and negative. This is our greatest possible domain for this restriction. Are you with me? With you. Yes. All right. I know that this is a bit challenging. This is new. I get that. I'm going to hand you out some new timetables and we're going to do 2.1. Um, just a reminder, when you see f of x, g of x, h of x, they all mean the same thing, right? They're just 